for tuning in. This is the Shikama Live Show with your host, Kevin Cardinale, produced by Boundless Enterprise LLC of Las Vegas in association with www.lasvegasnevadadui.com. Today I, uh, I present to you the video, Is Oprah Bad or Just Bad for Christianity? Um, there have been a number of videos presented uh, by Christian organizations, Christian groups, and uh, Christian political groups uh, with the notion that uh, Oprah is somehow evil, uh, that she is uh, uh, doing the uh, whole uh, Plato thing, leading the young, uh, innocent Christians astray and into the darkness of hell, fire, and brimstone, and what have you. And I present to you the opposite view, not that I'm for Oprah, I, I'll come right out and say that I actually hate Oprah on, for many reasons. But uh, I present to you the opposite view today that Oprah is not in fact bad, she is just bad for Christianity. And what people uh, don't understand is that Christianity is a religion. And when you talk to Christians, they say, no, it's not a religion. It is the belief in God. Christianity is a religion. It is just a religion. Nothing more. Judaism is a religion. Nothing more. Islam is just a religion. Nothing more. If somebody doesn't believe in your religion, that's because your religion fits into a box. Your religion cannot be all-encompassing because if it were, it wouldn't be a religion. It would be something else. Christianity fits into a nice, tiny, little box. Now, so what has Oprah done that made all of these Christian groups hate her so much to the point where they will spend million dollars in production to uh, produce videos and, and, and uh, mini documentaries uh, to denounce her and uh, bolster the Christian uh, uh, sheep. Well, she dared to say that uh, in approaching God, if you want to say God is a real thing, in approaching God as a real thing and not just something that one religion talks about that there are many paths to God she actually has not said that she believes in one specific way of reaching God she said the exact, exact opposite that there are many paths to approaching God meaning some people can sit and meditate and approach God. Now, for Christian leaders, this is very dangerous because if they lead, if she leads Christians away, they will stop uh, donating money to their organization, their church, or what have you. And that's what this is really about. There is no one approach to God, if God were real and some sort of benevolent being that created the universe. Uh, then there is no need to have a Christian faith. Right? So, besides that, uh, there are all of these uh, uh, movies, and they, they, it can't be just that one sentence that sh uh, uh, she doesn't believe in God. It's that she is illuminating. <laughs> nice play on word if you get the joke illuminating people to the to the notion that perhaps what people are really seeking as far as answers and as far as motivations it's found inside of you and not some being over here now let me say this I explained that you have a religion and you believe in a religion you don't believe in God you believe in a religion. Repeat after me, after me. I believe in a religion. 
not God. If you believe in God, that would mean that you don't believe in Christianity. You don't believe in Judaism. You don't believe in Islam. Because the two are not equal. Believing in God does not make you a Christian. Believing in Christianity makes you a Christian. Do you understand the logical explanation that I just gave you? It is a logic thing. We speak English. We're adults. Understand. Understand. You're understanding. You're understanding. Okay. So, by saying then that the power that you have in yourself, it then frees the person from saying, Oh, I have to go to church on Sunday. Oh, I have to donate my money to the church. Oh, I have to give my time to the church free of charge. Oh, I have to uh, take my profession that I study for, spent lots of money, and donate all of that, those skills to the church for free. Without so much as a tax write-off that you uh, don't get. Uh, she dared to say uh, that there are many approaches to God, right? And that uh, your religion is just one little tiny shop sitting on the side of the road of the many paths to the approaches of God. Let me say this, of the three religions, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, they are most, the most destructive religions in the history of the world. Now, there have been thousands of religions. Sit back and think about that statement right there. In all of the human history, there have been thousands upon thousands of religions. Christianity, Islam, and Judaism have to be the most destructive and degrading of all of the religions. All of the other ancient religions, which the uh, uh, big three have denounced and, and killed people uh, to, to make them stop believing in that, the big three are the only ones that say, you are nothing. You are evil. There is something wrong with you inherently. They're the only ones that say that. The other religions say, this is the approach to God. And that's it. Shinto, Buddhism, Taoism, um, tribal, Native American tribalism, South American tribalism, uh, <laughs> the Central American uh, tribalism, uh, the, the Mayans and Aztecs. I mean, they're pretty destructive. I mean, they're kind of kill you but for the most part <laughs> you were okay <laughs> there was nothing inherently wrong with you uh, you just had to die on a certain day and it was a luck of the draw or, or something or uh, I'm sure there was some politics in that too uh, hmm, yeah your uh, your girl wouldn't have sex with me so oh the God says we must sacrifice her today okay that's a little bit destructive but as the religion as a whole you were okay. You were fine. There was nothing inherently wrong with you. The big three say that there is something inherently wrong with you. Now, why would they say that? Let's think about that for a second. Why would they say there is something inherently wrong with you? Be it is the same process, if, if any of you have been in the military, it's the same process that the military does. The very second that you step foot on base into the training the very I mean as soon as your foot hits the ground come here maggot you're nothing but a man you're worthless you're weak blah 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 it tears you down it is mind wiping you it is brainwashing brainwashing you this is what the religion does they've been doing it now for a few hundred years no not a few thousand years not like you think only a few hundred years maybe three maybe four hundred the catholic church did not exist like you like they pretend it did one thousand years ago did not exist wasn't even there there was no 
all of that stuff about the, the turn of the millennium and blah, 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 blah. No, didn't happen. You heard it here. You know what happened? In the 14th century, some monk said, we're going to legitimize all of this. So in the 14th century, he took a calendar and then he counted back and he, he set Jesus as existing at, you know, at, you know, um, what is it, 27 BC, right? As being born 27 BC, starting preaching at the age of 30, at 33 he's dead in a, a sense, right? He calculated and counted that back. The Catholic Church didn't even exist in at the, at the turn of the millennium. Uh, I'm talking the new calendar, right? Didn't exist. A monk did that. A monk. Now, nobody's going to tell you that. Now, they took this calendar and they spread this all across Europe and in the Middle East, right? Because that's all they needed to do, really. So, okay, we've come with a new calendar. Uh, from henceforth, everybody is going to... Now, peasants working in the fields didn't much care. They were uneducated. I mean, these are white people. They were uneducated, illiterate. They probably didn't even know about calendars and dates and times. Didn't know. Didn't study history. So whatever they, the Catholic Church told them, or the king told them, or their lord told them, that's how it went. That's how it went down. That's it. Uh, we're going on a new calendar. Oh, didn't know there was a calendar. Okay. Now, why am I going back into all of this? All of that did not exist. So now, to usher in this new age of Christianity and Judaism and Islam, they have to rewrite everything and try and make it legitimate. Right? So they have to... They had to do a, a massive brainwashing, create a new calendar to legitimize all of these religions. Um, the big three then have a complete process. They destroy you, say that you're nothing, claim that you're nothing, nothing, claim that you are inherently evil, inherently evil. Now, everybody watching this, I want you to think back when you were three, when you were four, when you were 10, when you were 15, when you were 18. Were you inherently evil? Was, did you wake up uh, from a, a night's slumber and go, <laughs> yes, my evil slumber, I am awake. <laughs> No! <laughs> did, did you walk down the street? Did you get dressed and be like, Ha ha! I am wearing my evil clothes! Yes! Ha ha! When you were taking a shower, were you like, Yes! I am bathing in evilness! Ha 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 ha! No! I, I don't... I didn't! So... Uh, when you met a girl that you liked, did you like, ha <laughs> come to me, <laughs> Ooh, I have plans, such plans for you. No. <laughs> no, I didn't, I, I, I didn't do that. <laughs> I did none of that stuff. So where's this inherently evil stuff? They're brainwashing you, they're breaking down, they're breaking down your psychic walls. They're making you rethink your reality. They are actually changing your reality for you. And because, maybe you were like me, your mother and father drug you to church, willingly or unwillingly, and you had no say in it, you're subjected to this brainwashing. Oh, you're inherently evil. So what we're going to do to fix that is, you're going to join this church. To join this church, you must make a uh, metaphorical baptism which will cleanse your spirit. Somehow, the water that you've been taking a shower in all of these years, or bathing in all of these years, that, no, that didn't do the trick. 
they're gonna do some magic juju and somehow this magic water is now going to cleanse you of this inherent evil which is present in you somehow <laughs> okay now <laughs> Now that you know that, you must study and, and, and listen to us. And the, the most important person you listen to is the, the priest and the minister and the imam and the what have you. Because they know. And what, what do they know? They know about God. And God is up there and they talk to them and they have, a, they have him on speed dial and they have a direct connection to him. And you have to listen to them. Okay, now, now that we get all of that straight... You should donate to the church because it's doing nothing but good stuff. Um, but your church is located in a cesspool. I mean, there's poor stricken people all over. Oh, yes. The poor will always be here. So you got to donate. We're not going to do anything about the poor people because they're all, they will always be here. Now, where did you get that from? It says so in the Bible. Jesus himself said that uh, the poor people will uh, you will always have poor people always so there's nothing that you should do about it now this is the religion <laughs> and this is this is what this is what they do in the military they break you down tell you that you have to listen to the person above you right and you have to follow orders and, and they're a little bit more serious in the military. If you don't follow orders, you get thrown in jail. I mean, it's kind of serious. On the outside, they break you down. And they break you down like all your life. Break it, they tell you that, first of all, that worshiping God is important. First, that's the first notion. You have to get, worshiping God is important. You're nothing. You have to listen to the priest or minister. And you have to donate to the church. You have to donate to the church. Make sure you donate to the church. Not only that, you have to give 10% right off the top. Right off the top, 10%. This is, this is your religion. It is a religion. It's not an approach to God. It's a religion. It's, it's I'm sorry, it's not an approach to God. An approach to God will say, Okay, I'm going to give you a pamphlet. It's going to be a set of instructions. It's about five pages long and this is how you are going to approach God okay thank you for coming if if anybody else asks you how to approach God uh, you could let them photocopy the the pamphlet we'll be fine I'll be here just you know reading books or something that would be an approach to God right you got your instructions. You got, and then I know people are going to say, well, the Bible is, is a pamphlet to approach. No, the Bible is not a pamphlet to approach to God. The Bible is a set of historical stories that were told by Sumerians, Hittites, not Jews, not Hebrews. Uh, the Hebrews collected all of this stuff because they were... They were good about that. They were good about collecting stories from other cultures. They keep saying that it's a part of their culture and that this happened to them, but it didn't happen to them. Daniel and the lion's den? When you go back and then you do all the charts and you uh, you look through the history and you look through and you uh, get the timelines correct, Daniel didn't exist in the timeline that he says he existed. But the priest or rabbi doesn't mention that part it's a set of stories about different cultures around the world African cultures Middle Eastern cultures Asian cultures there's in the Bible there are stories that are Asian in origin but the Jews have incorporated it into the Bible as if it happened to them it didn't happen to them they weren't involved um, this collection of stories is just a collection of stories. It's, it's, it's fascinating. I recommend everybody read it. I'm a literary guy. I recommend everybody read it. I recommend everybody read everything. 
read as much as you can of any book. But the Bible is a collection of stories. It's not an approach to God. An approach to God would be like, um, this is what you should do to contact God. Right? If we're talking about approaching to God, let's approach God. I'm not talking about live a holy life, treat your neighbor. That's not an approach to God. That's an approach to having a good society. The two are not the same thing. Everybody keeps equating their religion and the teachings in their religion with approaching God. It's not. A lot of it is brainwashing and creating a good society. That's why I say reading the Bible is great. They have a collection of stories that pretty much covers probably a good 65% of everything that you will encounter in life. How's that approach to God? That's not an approach to God. If your husband leaves you, go look at the Bible and there's a story about, you know, what's a good thing to do. If you don't have a grandmother tell you, if you don't have a mother to tell you, if you don't have a father to tell you, if you don't have an uncle to tell you, you can go to the Bible and say, oh, this that happened to this girl over here in Samaria. If the, if the Bible were honest, it'd be like, you know, in... Um, 200 BC in Samaria uh, this this woman went through this and this is what she did and it has a happy ending because this is what she did this is how she approached it there you go that's not an approach to God <laughs> how's that approaching God this guy married a woman and the woman cheated on him had three children by other men and this is what he did that's not an approach to God that's a story about a guy who's who stuck with this woman who cheated on him that has nothing to do with God nothing zero it's a great story you can learn something from the story but it's not approach to God an approach to God would be like alright boil some water Get in a tub, throw ice in the tub, throw the boiling water on top of you and the ice, on top of the ice, which will instantly melt. It'll shock your system. You'll go into a higher uh, plane of uh, concentration. You'll lose consciousness, and you'll see God. That's an, that's instructions to approach to God. <laughs> you know that that would be an approach to God. <laughs> Not treat your neighbor nice. Treat your neighbor nice. That's an approach to, to a good society. Don't mistake brainwashing with something that it's not. I, I gave you the story of the Amish guy who had Bible studies and he was excommunicated from the Amish church. And he said quite intelligently, they're equating the Amish lifestyle with the church with the Bible and it's not true me having a Bible study is nowhere inherently evil there's nothing evil about that if anything in the Bible it would say that we should have Bible study by the bishop of the Amish church excommunicating me it means that He's putting the Amish culture above the Bible. And that's exactly what your minister and a priest, rabbi, imam is doing. They're equating your culture or your historical culture with God. And it's not true. The stuff in the Bible will teach you about different cultures, not the Jewish, not the uh, Jewish uh, culture about different cultures. You, you need to understand that these documents, these manuscripts come from other cultures. The Bible will teach you about all the cultures. Understand what a culture is. It's not an approach to God. So, is Oprah bad? Or is she just bad for Christianity? 
she's bad for Christianity. That doesn't mean she's bad. That doesn't mean she's evil. You have to understand that your religion may be a little bit bad all by itself. You have to understand that a lot of stuff in your religion might be talking about culture and is not talking about God. Is not talking about uh, how to be holy. Loving your neighbor, that's not holy. Loving your son, that's not holy. There's nothing holy about that. Holy, holy would be somebody who walks down the street radiating this awesome power and the friggin' flowers grow and people turn to them and go, Oh my God, where have you been all my life? Oh my God, you're so holy. That's holy. There's nothing, these, these ministers are not teaching you how to be holy. They're teaching you how to do your culture. Understand what culture is. I know a lot of you suffer from a bad education. You've been dumbed down in the public schools. You've been dumbed down by TV. You've been dumbed down by movies. I, I want you to grow a little bit. Now, like I said, I don't like Oprah. I, I hate her, in fact. Uh, as a Pan-Africanist, I hate, I, dis I despise her. But is she bad? Inherently? No. Is she bad for Christianity? Yes. But I might be bad for Christianity. Christ and understand what I'm saying. And understand by me saying that, understand that Christianity is right here. Little box. Little box. God over here. Christianity over here. Islam over here. Judaism over here. Little box. Little boxes. And they're just religions of the day. There have been thousands of religions. Humans have been alive for over 200,000 years. They, I know people are going to say, no, it's only 100,000. They keep discovering full human skeletons. I, I'm going to put it at 200,000. 200,000 years. Did, did somebody come up with the idea of a religion back say 150,000 years ago probably probably and they've and the the big three religion have quashed a whole bunch of other religions they didn't make it to the uh, to the Far East very well they made it but they didn't quash them and stamp them out anyway thank you I'm sorry this video is this long uh, thank you for listening if I recommend that you go ahead and leave a comment. I respond to everybody pretty much. Or if you want to have a discussion amongst yourselves, that's fine too. I don't believe Oprah is bad. I believe she's bad for Christianity. Now, I hate her for completely separate things. And is she bad inherently? Or is she bad for the stuff that I believe in? I believe she's bad for the stuff that I believe in. I don't appreciate her existence. For the stuff that I believe in, but it's that's not Christianity. It's not it's not a religion whatsoever. It's Pan Africanism. If you want to know about more about that, uh, you can leave a comment and question and that. Please subscribe. It helps me. It gives me a uh, a reason to create more videos. And uh, if there is something that you would like for me to research and make a video about, leave a comment also. Thank you. Ha, <laughs>